Hey guys, Josh here, and this video is a marriage and gift guide for Story of Seasons A Wonderful Life. We'll go over how to get married in this game, tips to increase your relationships faster, and of course the likes and dislikes of each marriage candidate. First, let's cover how the marriage mechanics work in this game. There are 8 marriage candidates to choose from, and you can decide to marry any one of those 8 characters, no matter your gender. In order to propose, you will need to raise someone's affection to 8 hearts, and then give them a blue feather, which you should automatically receive from the harvest sprites on the first day of summer. The relationship system can be a bit confusing at first, because as you see we have both hearts and a friendship bar, and for the most part, they will both increase as you try to romance someone, but there is a bit of a difference. The higher your friendship is, the faster you will gain hearts. So since each character starts at a different friendship level, for example, Nami and Gordy start at a lower level and Gustafa and Molly start at a higher one, some characters will be more difficult to romance and others will be easier. So let's first learn how to increase that friendship, then we will go over how to increase hearts. You can increase friendships by talking to villagers every day and offering them gifts, and we will go over a list of recommended gifts a bit later, but that is the main way of raising your friendship. You can also set up a stall by the Bluebird Cafe to sell items to villagers that pass by, and every time you sell something, it will increase your friendship with that person, and if you give them a discount, it will go up a bit more. If you refuse to sell them an item, then your friendship will decrease. Other things to be careful of is when you trigger an event with a character, and sometimes in daily conversations as well, you will have different dialogue options, and depending on the option that you select, your friendship will either increase or decrease, so just keep that in mind if you tend to press buttons quickly or skip dialogues as you might pick the wrong option by accident. Also, if you show someone an item that they dislike or if you show them an item that they like but then you refuse to give it to them, your friendship will decrease. So this is how friendship works and the higher it is, the faster hearts will go up. So now let's talk about the hearts. You will only see the hearts during the first year and only with the characters that you can marry. For the most part, it increases the same way as the friendship does. So by giving presents, talking, triggering events and selecting the correct dialogue options, but there are a few special ways as well. For example, changing your appearance and looking at yourself in the mirror daily will increase your hearts with Molly, Lumina, Rock and Gustafa. The rate at which it will increase will vary depending on your friendship, but if you do both, changing your appearance and looking at yourself in the mirror every day, you should be able to get one or two extra hearts per month. Also, for it to work, you need to actually change something in your appearance. So if you just open the customization menu and confirm it won't work, you have to actually change your hair, your outfit or something for it to work. There is also a special way of increasing your hearts with Cecilia and Matthew, and that is by using your hoe, your sickle and your watering can. At the beginning of the game, I did some testing and it took me about 8 days of using all of my stamina on farming and that got me to one heart with each character. So it goes up pretty slowly, however, it's still good to know and you will end up farming a bit every day anyway. However, I would not necessarily recommend just wasting your time or energy on tilling the soil just for fun or watering the soil if you don't have any seeds just to increase your relationships faster because in the end it will not make a huge difference. On the other hand, changing your appearance and looking at yourself in the mirror every day is very quick and doesn't consume any stamina, so it is a bit more worth it if you're interested in Molly, Lumina, Rock or Gustafa. The only characters that do not have any special way of increasing their hearts are Nami and Gordy, who are also the ones starting with a lower friendship, so those two are a bit more challenging. Also, you probably will remember this if you played the original game, but each romanceable character has a diary in which you can see how much they like you. These are basically just the hearts from the relationship menu divided by 2 and rounded up. So they are on a scale from 1 to 5 instead of 1 to 10, but they don't serve any special purpose. So once you're at 8 hearts with a character, just give them the blue feather and they should accept your proposal and you will get married at the end of the first year. If you try to give them the blue feather at 7 hearts for example and they refuse, then on the same day your relationship goes up and you go to 8 hearts, you will have to wait the next day before they will take you seriously and accept your proposal, but other than that, if you're at 8 hearts, they should accept. Each character has multiple love events where you will get to know more about them and those events will give a boost to your relationship, however they are not mandatory in order to get married. Once someone has 
has accepted your blue feather, you will not be able to see any of the other love events. This is important to keep in mind if you want to see events with other characters or even the events with the person you're planning to marry. They all have an event that starts from 8 hearts and Cecilia, Molly and Nami even have events from 9 hearts. So if you want to see those, just wait a bit before proposing. I will put a link in the description to a list of all of the events with their marriage candidates. Next, let's discuss what happens if you don't get married in the first year. If you did not give the blue feather to anyone, at the end of the year, Takakura will come to your house and you will be able to choose between any character that has over 70 friendship points and 6 hearts. If no one likes you enough, your two default options will be Cecilia or Rock. And then after that, once you pick someone, they will come over to your house and they will propose to you. If you refuse to marry anyone, then it will be game over, unfortunately. A big component of this game is getting married and raising your child. So you cannot play further than the first year without getting married and having a child. By the way, it works the exact same way if you're in a same-sex relationship, so there's no difference. All right, so that is how the marriage works in A Wonderful Life. Now let's talk about gifts and how to raise your affection quickly. In this game, gifting can seem a bit complicated or unusual compared to others in a series because most characters will accept more than one gift per day. I did a ton of testing for this and I managed to come up with a list of items that are easy to get every day in the first year and that can be used to gift as many characters as possible. This is not an exhaustive list of everything that you can give. However, it is the most simple and should help increase your relationships pretty easily. Of course, feel free to adapt it depending on who you are planning to romance. First, go around the valley and pick up any flowers you see. They will respawn every few days and they are the easiest gifts. Just keep in mind that flowers like the Trick Blue, Happy Lamp, Gem Soil and Upseed can be used later to upgrade your seeds or to make hybrids. So I would prioritize giving other flowers first just in case. From 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., you can go to the digging site and speak with Carter to start digging. In the first year, you should be able to find some coins, moonlight ores, leaf fossils, and human-shaped haniwa. So you will need a few of these items, and just keep in mind that starting from the second year, you will find variations of these items, like the silver coin, the fish fossil, the horse-shaped haniwa, and more. However, for this video, I will only be talking about the things you'll find in the first year. So just remember that because some characters might, for example, like the leaf fossil, but dislike the fish fossil. We will also need to prepare a few dishes. However, they're all very simple. The first one is milk soup, and you can learn the recipe from the bulletin board on the very first day of spring, as there should be a request from Gordy asking for a milk soup, and taking the request will teach you the recipe automatically. The only thing you need is milk, and since you start the game with a cow, it's very easy. The next one is egg soup, and you should learn it pretty early from the harvest sprites. They will teach you one recipe per day, so don't forget to talk to them frequently. You only need eggs for this soup, so I would recommend ordering a chicken on your first day so you can start getting some. We will need one more type of soup, and just keep in mind, I am making this video based on the Japanese version of the game, so some item names might vary slightly, but this this one is called the Susu Soup. It is the soup made with the herb that appears on your farm in spring. And you should also learn this recipe from the Harvest Sprites. So make a bunch of those three soups, especially the milk and egg ones. You will need quite a few of them. Also bring some milk and eggs and some crops. Crops will take a few days as obviously they need to grow. In spring, tomatoes grow the fastest in about five and a half days. However, Gustafa doesn't like tomatoes, so I would recommend going for watermelons or strawberries, which grow in six and a half days. And the last item we need is just for rock. However, he likes fodder, so keeping some on you would be useful and it's super easy to get. Just plant fertilizer in your pasture, once the grass is grown, cut it with your sickle, then go to the dispenser in your barn and take it out. So if you manage to get all of these items, that is the ideal inventory to gift all of the romanceable characters in the easiest way. If any character dislikes anything that's in the list of items we're carrying, I will make sure to mention it. But now let's go out and start gifting. Let's start with Cecilia. Every day you can give her one flower, one crop, one egg, one milk soup, and one other dish. So either the egg soup or herb soup will work. So that's five gifts per day. You can substitute the flowers by the moonlight ore or the human-shaped haniwa. However, I would recommend keeping those for other characters since the flowers are so easy to get. The only thing to be careful about is that she doesn't like fossils, so don't try giving that to her or your relationship will decrease. 
Next is Molly. Every day you can give her one flower, one coin or moonlight ore, one milk, one egg soup, and one other dish. So that's also five gifts per day. And just like Cecilia, she doesn't like fossils, but she also doesn't like fodder. Then there's Nami. Every day you can give her either one leaf fossil or haniwa, one crop, one egg soup, and one other dish. On top of that, you can also give her one gem soil or one trick blue, which are two flowers that can be found in autumn. The only thing to be careful about is that Nami doesn't like the goddess drops flowers. The last girl is Lumina and her likes actually change in the second year as she gets older. But for the first year, which is the most important, if you're trying to marry her, you can give her one egg, then two flowers or two moonlight ores or one of each. On top of that, you can also give her two trumpet mushrooms that can be found in autumn. So that's a total of five gifts per day. Lumina doesn't like fossils or fodder. And keep in mind that she cannot give her anything while she's playing the piano, so I would recommend to either go early in the morning while she's still in her bedroom, or in the afternoon when she's usually done playing. Next we have Matthew, and you can give him one milk, one egg, one crop, one herb soup, plus one other dish for a total of five gifts. Matthew does not like fossils, and next we have Gustafa, you can give him either one milk or one milk soup, then one other dish, one flower or one moonlight ore, then one crop for a total of four gifts. As I said earlier, Gustafa doesn't like tomatoes, so just make sure you give him a different type of crop. And he also does not like fish, fossils, wild herbs and mushrooms, so he is quite picky. Then we have Rock, you can give him one fodder, one dish and one coin for a total of three gifts. You can substitute the father by a haniwa, a mist moon, an upseed, or a toy flower. But the father is obviously the easiest one to get in this case. And this is the only character for whom I couldn't find a fourth gift that he would accept every day. So if any of you manages to find out something else that he likes, please let me know and I can pin your comment. Also, Rock doesn't like moonlight ores and fossils. And lastly, we have Gordy. You can give him one milk or milk soup one egg soup, one egg, one crop, one flower or anything from the mine. And so that's a total of five gifts. However, what's tricky with Gordy is that you cannot give him anything while he's reflecting, which he's doing most of the time. The best moment to give him something would be whenever you see him walking between his house and the beach, or sometimes he also goes to the forest but just try to catch him while he's still walking. Other characters also won't be able to accept gifts while they're busy, for example, when Gustafa or Lumina are playing music, but Gordy is definitely the trickiest one. Also, keep in mind that he does not like fish, and sometimes you will have to show an item twice to someone before they accept it as a gift. So if at any point you're trying to follow this guide and the character is not accepting a gift that I listed, just show it to them a second time. And that is it. I hope this video was helpful and that you learned a few things. Let me know who you're planning to marry and I will be making a lot more guides and tips videos. So feel free to subscribe if you don't want to miss out and I'll see you all in the next video.